Oh, welcome back. Uh, I hope you you are enjoying and learning a lot during this uh, series of videos related to uh, overset meshes. So for the moment we are done with something so now let's move to fluid. So pretty much remember everything we have said so far. Remember the theory, the brief theory we, we, we studied in the first video because things are very, very similar. Okay, the differences will be in the setup of reading sense, but will be very similar. You will need to to generate separated meshes, then you merge stuff, and then you define the uh, overset patch. Okay, but then there are a few differences, but you will see that we are going to get very similar meshes, and then Fluent goes one step forward, okay, to get even better uh, overset mesh sets. So we're going to see that, and we're going to use uh, Fluent. Uh, I won't say anything about Fluent, I hope you know how to do it. Uh, the only thing that uh, you can get, you can use the academic versions, you are a student, so you can use your institutional email, your academic email, or, well, the other way is getting the commercial one. Uh, currently, we are using the commercial one. We, uh, we are su we are supported by our technology uh, partner, DL DLTM, that is a computing center located here, uh, close where we are. So we use their hardware and their software license. So in the link below, you will see, uh, in, in the description below, you will see a, a link to to, to, to the contact person if you're interested in getting uh, a code about hardware and also software, okay? They offer very competitive prices. So sorry about that publicity, but we, I need to say that we, we, we work together. So let's open uh, our front. So we're going to read exactly the same mesh that we we, we use in Open Phone. So remember in Open Phone, we read 3D, uh, 3D meshes, but we use this anti patch we're going to do exactly the same in Fluent, okay? So for those familiar from, from Fluent, you might know that here you have actually 2D meshes. We need to, to use those empty patches, but as we are going to read that, we need to use a 3D mesh. So just read 3D mesh and also use a double precision and feel free to use as much processors as you would like. So I'm launching uh, Fluent. Okay, so we're going to read, we're going to work with the, the case with the stretch mesh, the background one. So we're only going to have two component meshes, but just to see how to, to, to do the whole setup is straightforward. Then the next video, we're going to use the one with the three component meshes. And then the other will be, we're going to put the mesh into motion. Okay, so, and we're going to compare things between open and fluent. So at this point, let's, let's read the, the input mesh. So read mesh. So in my case, I have that mesh here. So in the link below, also you have the meshes. So I'm going to put to, there. You will find two meshes done using uh, ANSYS measure. So first, read. You can read any of this of the meshes, but I'm going to read the old mesh. Okay, this will represent the the background mesh. Okay. So now let's plot. Let's see what we have. So let's plot here. So this is what we have. So remember background, and then we're going to read a second mesh. Okay. So it will be something equivalent to doing the merging in open phone. And see that we have also uh, pay attention to our naming convention. So in theater one would represent this one. Back fronting. We have all the patches. See that the mesh is actually. Uh, 3D, so for those familiar with Fluent, you know that you can have uh, you, you can have fully 2D meshes, so everything is done in one plane, but in this case we're reading 3D. So what we're going to do is assign symmetry patches here and here. So we'll be equivalent for those who know how to use CFX, what you do in CFX, okay? It works also in Fluent. So the next step will be reading the other mesh, okay? So to do that here, you will see here that in domain sounds, you will have a pen action and you can append a case file. So you can read another mesh and you can read as many meshes as you like when you are assembling your overset mesh. So we're going to read this linear mesh. 
See, that will give you this small warning because it's merging some patches. Remember that we're using the same name and convention and everything. So here is telling you it's out of, out of date this view. You just right click, refresh, refresh view. Okay, and now let me come here and see that we have different patches. So for this point on, and see that we have previously we have interior one which was the which was the the background and interior one that one will be the new one. For from this point on, I would work just in the back uh, surface patch. So if I play this one, press this one, see that now we have the set here. So this is how you proceed to assemble the meshes, okay? So here we are doing some, a few clips. In open phone, you need to prepare your dictionaries, common lines, but pretty much is the same way. We proceed in the same way. The next step, we need to define the boundary conditions, okay? I won't go into details to, to define the boundary conditions, even I, I won't set up this case, I will just want to see, uh, you, uh, to do things a little bit fast, and I guess you know how to do uh, fluid, probably in another video uh, I can do it. So, as you go here in boundary conditions, see that we define everything, let me see, right click, and I will group by some type. See that we have all the songs, we have internal, the, to that songs internal source that we're, we're reading. We have the outlets that they are naming automatically when you are reading. Okay, then you can rename everything. But what is important, we need to create that overset patch. Okay, so let's see where we do we have it. We have it here. You see, overset patch. This is the name I gave. I know that 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 corresponds to to that one. I, I gave that name when I was doing the mesh. So select overset patch and select the overset option here. Apply and see now in interfaces the overset meshes is enabled. So always to enable like you know from to enable that the the overset meshes you need to use the overset patch. So we use the overset patch and now we can go here overset and we can create our our set. So the overset interface let's I will give it a name. You can give it any name. Over we call it. So you see that background songs. I know it's fluent one. And then component songs, I will use fluent one dot one. Okay, I know that is my naming naming convention. So if you have many meshes, you you will have different options here, and you will select which one is your background, which one is your component mesh. So you see, it's relatively straightforward. So now I will set here, press create, create. I will press there. So you have this on there, and at this point, you create the overset patch. Okay. So well, just to do everything, let's assign also the boundary patches. So we have back. Okay, that's this one will be symmetry. Okay, the other back one will be for just the cylinder. Let's do everything to to have this set up. Bottom, I will set up also a symmetry, but I think in the case of, in the fluent case, in the open phone case, it's set up as an open. Doesn't matter, okay? So you, you will get the same, same results. This is there is a wall from the front plane, symmetry as well. This corresponds to the cylinder, symmetry as well. Inlet, so in inlet, I would like to use uh, velocity inlet, okay? Here in this dot, it will ask me velocity. I will put just normal to the in the patch. Okay, these are interiors, nothing to change. Pressure alloys, okay, overset patch, top. Uh, let's put symmetry also on top. Okay, so now here we have the whole setup. So see that we have walls, symmetry, overset, outlet, and inlet. Okay. So this is our setup. As you see, very straightforward, very easy to do. So then, well, you have here is the 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 use of uh, as uh, outline view influence. So you can choose your solvers and everything. So as you go to general, you can choose what kind of problem. So for instance, this case would be a transient. So you set transient. We're going to use pressure based solver, similar to the ones that we have in Open. From here, in Flint, you have also density based. So once it's important also before uh, going and using overset meshes and so on, you should you should know the limitations. So remember you have the documentation. Documentation you have a few limitations. So read this the limitation because it doesn't work with everything. Okay. The first thing is that you will realize that you you cannot use the uh, simple 
our piezo pressure velocity couple to solve the equations. In open fund, the pressure based solvers they are high wire with overset meshes and coupled and coupled solvers. Okay, you have that limitation somewhere here, I think. Okay. So just read your limitations. So couple solvers are very robust, very good, very efficient. The problem is that you are doing on steady cases. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more time consuming because they use more resources, but they are very good ones. So just read limitations and, and know what you can do. So you have the solvers, you go into models, you can choose models. So every is compatible with everything. So in this case, we don't need to use any other models as the one you can put in your equation, viscous, which is turbulence modeling, you can add species, reaction, radiation, radiation, everything. So materials, choose your working material. So we're using this one, and remember in open funds, we were using one as a density, and this one was 0 0.01. So let's have this setup as similar as possible. Send zones, here we don't need to do anything, but you want to know here, you just set up source terms and stuff like that. So you have many options here available. Boundary conditions, we already set that. And overset interface, we already set that one. Then you have additional entries that we don't need to work with them, but when we deal with, when we're going to deal with dynamic meshes, this is the one to set up the, the motion. So, Remember, in open form, you have dynamic mesh dictionary here. You will have this dynamic mesh uh, entry uh, tab where you can put your, your values. So let's go to solution method. So remember, I told you overset meshes are only compatible with the couple. So if you go simple, it will give you this warning and will tell you. So stick with this one. Okay. Then control some options specific to, to the couple solver. And I go into details. I hope you know the theory. And then you can set up some monitors. So let's set up a monitor for drag force. So new force drag here. I will compute it in the cylinder. Report plot print. Give it a name drag. Okay, so that is monitor. So we're going to save that information everything. And I need to set up something else here. So nothing else. So now that I what, what I need, okay, preference value, so for the coefficient. So uh, compute for area. So you have your area is two length two velocity. So this is just for the coefficients, okay, reference value to compute all your to normalize all those quantities. So at this point we set up the whole case, okay. So now we need to do the overset, the whole cutting, you know, to find the dead cells, interpolation cells. And to do that, we need to initialize. That is the only step, okay? So as soon as you do the initialization, okay, initialize, fluid is computing everything, okay? So here, you don't see anything, but if you go back to mesh, see that here, if I select now, overset, I will display the overset mesh. Okay, so see that here we have the two component mesh background and the one about the cylinder. But also you see that it's a little bit different from the one we have from 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 uh, open from open from is closer to the to to this wall. So this is a step forward in fluent that this is called the minimization, whole, the whole coding minimization. So initially you have your interpolation very close to the wall. Okay, which is okay, but you have all these cells that basically you are wasting resources. So when you minimize, you reduce this area and you put it close to the or to the overset patches, patches. Okay, so that is what is missing in open fund to have everything. Let's say very very efficient. Okay, but in fluent also we can go back to that same setup. Okay, so here where. In the minimization, so let's get something similar to what we can get in an open form. Okay, so remember here you have the text user interface and in Fluent, you can access more advanced features. So I'm going to have to access a few features related to overset meshes. Okay, so see that we have many options here as specific to overset interfaces. Let me go to options, and here I want to set up okay, expert. Okay, I want to get uh, uh, I want to get access to advanced more advanced features, and I want to uh, ch change the minimization overlap. This is the the the, the, the algorithm to 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 
to do the whole cutting. So minimize overload. I will set no. Okay, so now I'm, u I'm using a different algorithm to do that, to find that hole. So to compute again the overshape meshes and everything, remember you each each time you initialize, you are recomputing everything. So let's reinitialize. Okay, let's visualize again. So it's display, and this is what we have. So see that now this is very similar and to the result that we, we were having in open from or the one that we have for, with open from okay so both approaches will work but as you see the other one the minimization is farther you are you are not wasting resources here and maybe you will get a better interpolation you will you will have a, a, a cleaner feel okay because you don't have this let's say this noise that you will have in in the in, in that component mesh so at this point we're ready to go you can run your simulation as usual, as you do in the usual way, way. nothing change. Okay, so remember, usually overset meshes are more time consuming, more expensive than single meshes. And this is the case also for Fluent, okay? The fact that it's a commercial one, that it's a very robust, very good one, doesn't mean that it will run faster. So you are paying that uh, extra price for adding those additional cells to compute in all those interpolations and everything. So I won't run this case. I will do some comparison because I already have the solution. So this takes some time. Feel free uh, to run the, the case. So I will also put in the files in the link below in the description. You will see all the files, but also you will see the case setup ready to run as you, as you get lost at one point. So what I want to show you is the results and comparison between meshes and solutions, okay? But also I want to show you a little bit if you want to play around with the advanced options. That here you have many options available. So for instance, let me plot here contours because also we have access to the cell types like in OpenFund. So create a new one. And that information will be hidden here in cell info. Okay, and see, and see that you can have overset, overset cell type. Okay, I want to have that information here. And okay, I want to plot no values. This is interpolated value. <coughs> and this is what we have. So see that now things are similar to what we were seeing up in front. And here when we plot automatically the, the, the dead cells are removed from the visualization. And now I can plot also the cylinder mesh. And this is what we have. Okay, so see that you have the solution. So now here the the, the classification is a little bit different, but the idea is the same. Oh, you have a pointer for each cell type. So again, you go to the documentation that I have it open here. Okay, and see here that post-processing, you have in user guide, chapter 66, you will have everything in overset meshes. So see that here in, in, in Fluent, you will have the value of the cell. So if you have a value of two, means that it's a donor cell. So remember, these donor and receptor cells are those interpolation, okay? Which belong also to, 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 to the solution cells, okay? So you have donor cells that are receiving information. Solve is where you solve everything all around your domain. And receptors are cells that are giving information to a donor. So uh, so the overset method now what it's doing is that one getting donors and receptors and doing the interpolation and computing and everything, okay? So let's say all these positive quantities all belongs to uh, the big uh, cell type that is solve cells, and then you can subdivide between donor receptors and everything else, okay? That is not drawn donor receptors. Then you have orphan cells, okay? Orphan cells is when the method, okay, the whole coding algorithm doesn't manage to find uh, a cell from, from where to get uh, information or self leave hanging around alone, okay? So that can happen, that can be dangerous because you're not interpolating the information. So if you have those errors, it will tell, Fluent will tell you. Also, you can have that information in open form. You see the no in the debug auctions that I think we, we show that in the control data, you can enable that auction. And then minus two dead cells or the whole cells in, in open form, okay? So it's something like this you will have, okay? So in our case, we have this, okay? So for instance, here we're only showing donors and so uh, donor uh, donors and solve cells, but you can access, for instance, the receptor cells. So here, as you go in auctions, you will see that you can also ask Fluent to render receptor receptor cells. So let's render those also. Yes. 
and save display and then you have also a resector so see that the resector is that very nice interpolation frames that we have in open front remember you have it here okay then you have donors here you can also see donors so all those cells here you see in, re in red are giving information to the, that interpolation frames that better we can see here okay see here interpolation close to the wall okay and you check the other one the same get information and here you have also donors giving information to to the background okay as you see pretty much is the same idea but now let's see the meshes compare fluent with open phone okay exactly this mesh so here also i'm doing the post processing i have it already open here using inside okay which is part of the workbench so here right side here we have fluent Le uh, left side fluent, right side we have open phone. As you see, pretty much we have very similar uh, overset meshes. Okay, so let me get it better. So see that the hole, the actual hole, is a little bit different, but you get the idea that it's doing the same work. Okay, so you have interpolation area. Okay, in this case, will be the resectors here in open form. In their jargon, they call it interpolation. You have the hole here, you have the nice interpolation area in this one. Also, you have it here, and here, also, additionally, you can see the donor self to this interpolation. That here in open form, you can access that one using some other options. So, as you see, pretty much will be the same. So, when the, ta the time when we put this into motion, We'll do exactly the same. Each time step, the solver, the library will compute all these uh, type cells and it will keep going. Okay, like we, like, like we have proceeded in open form. Okay, so nothing changed. Well, the chance it will be a different graphical user interface and maybe I have to say uh, Fluent is a very good, very robust implementation. Okay, this doesn't mean that open form is not good, but sometimes open form, first, you don't have this whole code of minimization and sometimes can give you some problems, but it does have for really difficult meshes. But let's say normal meshes. Is almost, uh, but almost uh, full proof. So, but let's compare. Now we see that we have similar results, but let's see the difference between this one that we don't have minimization and the one with the minimization. So also I have it already up in here. Okay, so I don't want to see this one. And show me this one here. Okay, and see this. Okay, we're here at fluent level. Remember, fluent cannot do this. So this is this will be different. Now see that we have a big hole here. So we're removing a lot of cells in the background mesh that we don't need. Okay, and the interpolation is done at this level. Okay, here this far is done. So we will have kind of a, a, a implicit interpolation if I can use that terminology. You know, the cells are very close. Okay, so. This will be better, okay, in the sense that in this case, you are also having solution here. So maybe this solution will influence some field on the back here. That solution is removed and you have this uh, interpolation close to, to the other patch in the other component mesh. Okay, as you see, the donors are very similar and Okay, this is how, how, how it works. I hope that the guys from Open Phone in the next release, I hope they will add also the, the, this, this functionality, uh, this function, okay? Because it's really useful, okay? I have managed to do something like this, but you need to program a little bit, modify measure, so it's not very uh, user convenient. Now, let's compare results also. So here I have as well the results. So what we have here is Left side we have open phone, right side. No, left side is fluent, right, right side is open phone. So let's press play and see that the solutions are very similar. So here we use uh, same initialization. Remember that we have some initialization, same boundary conditions. If I would recall, the only different boundary conditions will be the fluent symmetry open phone. If I would recall, it is open. Okay, nothing changed. But look at that, we have very similar fields okay and the differences are not differences but in our set measures remember that you will have okay 
Hey, that missing here. That maybe the meshes are not very similar. You will have a little bit of smearing of the solution here that you see that in both cases, these are different solvers, remember, totally different solvers. This is using couple a couple approaches. This is using the uh, segregated approach. And see that pretty much we have almost identical solutions, okay? So I press play, we have the same vorticity shading. Okay, so as you see, you can get the same results with open phone and fluent. Okay, and even computational times are very similar. And let's see another field. So for instance, we can check also velocity. So velocity in this case it will be U. Okay, so we have here open phone. Let me check it here also. U. Okay. Uh, uh. Okay, over set patch I have at home. Uh, U here. So we have velocity. And let me go here also. This, this. Velocity magnitude. Okay. So as you see also, the velocity fields are very similar. Okay, so we're using same scales. Okay, so as you see, probably some differences here, but on there, but pretty much same result. We go, go close to the cylinder. Okay. Okay, I'm missing the cylinder for a minute. Okay. I was missing just the, the, the overset patch. Okay, see that very similar results. And same will be pressure, the pressure, okay? So as you see, open front has nothing to envy to fluent. And I'm saying I can say the opposite, okay? Fluent does nothing to envy, but fluent goes this a step forward that you can have the minimization. And also just to show you quality of the results. So this is qualitative. Let's do something quantitative. So here also have the solutions already for the forces. So let's plot using new plot. So I will plot this line here. So this will be drag force. And this is what we have. Here I could, we're comparing, so let me have fluent to solution. So remember, we have with, with and without minimization. So let's do apple with apple, no minimization. As you see, very similar solutions, okay? Even you have those noisy behaviors here. Look at the initial transient, also very similar initial transient. Will, as you see, you will compute also the same frequencies, okay? So you go and compute a stroll, you will have very similar results. So here in this case, the mean values will be very similar, okay? And now let's compare, let me have open phone and compare fluent the two approaches. Now see that we're using fluent with the minimization, the red line, okay? And see that there is some difference, but remember, different meshes, you are taking some information. So at this point, it's difficult to say which one is the best one. Probably we'll go with the one that has minimization, but this is up to you. Now we go to the point that Okay, how good is cloth enough? Okay, two, five, ten percent. But let's say that for me this will be okay. And we can do the same check lift. Okay, so here also we have this script for lift. And we plot lift, and this is information. As you see, very similar behavior. So if I don't use the one with minimization, almost we get the same maximum uh, values in lift, same peaks almost identical frequency shedding frequencies and a little bit different the other one but again where let's say within the limits those values okay and also let's go on an extra step and i will compute the mean values so okay so also let's compute as well the statistics so here i have the script so i will go this one to compute will be lift so as you see here 1.4322, that will be the mean value of life. So if I compare the one with no minimization, will be this one. Okay, so 1.4207. Okay, so as you see, very close. So probably this will be like less than 1%, okay? 
So this is the point which one is the right one now. So again, well, in my personal opinion, I think what is important is ca capturing the same trends. So you see that you have the same trends, then you will have close values, and probably you will need to use some critical assessment to see what is going on. But pretty much this, the results are very similar. And we're going to do the same with the one when we have no minimization. Okay. And here we have a little bit larger difference, but again, something within about 5%, probably things less than 3%. Okay, so very similar results, similar behaviors, okay, different solvers, and Fluent using some different techniques for the whole key of cutting. So this is our set meshes in Fluent. Hope you're enjoying. The next case, I'm going to show you using multiple component meshes, but pretty much will be the same approach. And then we're going to put things into motions following the same approach that we were doing in Open Fluent. And then the final case, will be a really body motion, but we're going to compare open phone and fluent and get a whole idea how to set up everything. So I think this is all. I hope you enjoy it and see you next time. Bye.